The following year, Howard and Grazer went into production on Splash, a fairy tale romantic comedy about a man and a mermaid. Ron, who had proven he had an eye for young talent, began his search for the ideal cast. When we were casting Splash, I was a huge Bosom Buddies fan at the time, and I was telling him that he had to see Tom Hanks. I went in and read for Ron, and he, he put me through about a 20-minute audition process. I don't know how it happened, but 24 hours later, he called me up and told me I had the part, and literally, my life was changed forever. <laughs> Splash starred television actor Tom Hanks, opposite Daryl Hannah and John Candy. Ron was concerned about directing a big-budget feature that involved demanding underwater sequences, and true to form, he dove right in and faced the challenge. He was no pretender to the throne. He wasn't doing it to see if he could do it. Ron had already directed so many things and always been thinking about everything so much as a director that I felt as though I was already in the hands of a guy who was an accomplished filmmaker. I love you, Madison. Go! Though the underwater scenes were visually compelling, it was the heartwarming romance between Hanks and Hannah that captivated audiences. Splash opened on March 9, 1984, and was a runaway box office success. At the age of 30, Ron Howard had joined the ranks of Hollywood's most sought-after young directors. He was on a roll, and there was no turning back. Biographies look at Ron Howard will continue. But first, do you know tonight's bio trivia? Ron Howard was a contestant on what popular 19th century... Hand picked by 20th Century Fox to direct Cocoon. Action! A film about a group of senior citizens who stumble on a fountain of youth created by extraterrestrials. Cut! Excellent. Okay, print that. Cocoon starred veteran actors Jessica Tandy, Hume Cronin, and Don Amici. And although the special effects were central to the plot, Ron strove not to let them overshadow his storytelling. Coming with us, Bernie. No. I came to say goodbye. I just wanted to tell you I hope you find what you're looking for. Rose is gone, Bernie. My stay. This is my home. This is where I belong. It was kind of a tough transition going from child actor to adult director. But I looked up and I saw him up here setting all these shots on this Chapman crane and so confident and so sure of himself and knowing exactly how to do it. And I just, I said to myself, the kid is a director. By God, he's made it. And it, I felt so good. And even telling you the story, the hair stands up on the back of my neck. In August 1986, Ron and Brian Grazer solidified their partnership and formed Imagine Films Entertainment Incorporated. In order to raise operating funds, the new company went public on the New York Stock Exchange, where thousands of eager investors bought shares in a man they had trusted for years, Ron Howard. He's uniquely intelligent and he's tough. He's not an easygoing guy. He's calm, but he's not easygoing. He is very competitive. But it makes for a very good partner to have someone that has the embodiment of all of those strengths. Though his next film, Willow, was not warmly received, Ron had much more on his mind than the ups and downs of his career. Two years earlier, Cheryl had given birth to twins, Jocelyn and Paige. And on April 12, 1987, the family welcomed a son, Reed. Reed, go see Dad. Not yet, not yet, Bryce, Bryce. Wait, Wait around here. For his next project, Calendar photo. the father of four decided to tell a story about a topic very close to his heart. Simply titled Parenthood, the film was a playful portrait of American family life and featured an all-star cast, including Steve Martin and Mary Steenburgen. Hey, what do you say later, 
When the kids are asleep, I wear this outfit. She's in our bed. Hi, Daddy. What's the matter, honey? You don't feel so good? Mm -mm. You feel like you want to throw up? Okay. Gil, oh my God, I'm oh, Taylor, baby. Oh, sweetie, oh. Gil, why are you just standing there? Oh, I'm sweetie. waiting for her head to spin around. You'll be all right. You'll be okay. Parenthood was great because it represented so much of us. And that was really an American family, and it was seen through the eyes of Ron Howard. But by 1989, Ron had been working nonstop for several years and feared that his home life was suffering. Howard announced he would direct only one film every 12 to 18 months in order to spend more time with his wife and children. In certain ways, my dad is, is more involved with my day-to-day -day life than my mom because he's so conscious of the fact that he has to work um, and that he has to go off and film movies. So when he is home, He'll be at my school talking to my guidance counselors. And he's a little gullible when it comes to his, his three girls. You know, <laughs> you know we're, always, we're always sort of giving him a run for his money. Inspired by his parents' 50-year love affair, Ron brought the same devotion to his own marriage. I think they are soulmates because it's remarkable that they met each other. And it was just that they just completely clicked. I think they have a good partnership. Like, they, they go out three nights a week to go and see movies together. It's, like, they're not supposed to do that. They've been married for over 20 years. <laughs> After the success of the 1991 film Backdraft, Ron took his family to Ireland to shoot Far and Away, starring Hollywood royalty Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. It was an important picture for him. And obviously, it was an important picture for us. You know, we called it the honeymoon picture. Uh, because Nick and I had just gotten married, and, you know, we're off making this great adventure picture, and it was so much fun making that film with him. It's great. Have a look at this. Land, it says. Land? They've got so much of it, they give it away for free. No land is given away in any part of the world. In America, it is. And I'm going there. I was very young at that stage and, and new to American films. And so I was very shy. And he would draw me out, which was lovely. And he gave me a lot of confidence. The film was loosely based on the tales Ron had heard from his father about his own great-grandfather's participation in the 1893 Oklahoma land rush, and he felt a deep commitment to telling the story. Fire! And it was amazing to see him directing these huge sequences at the end of the film with hundreds of horses and carriages just on his game. Yeah. Yeah. We always think back what a great experience that was. We were working over the summer and all the, the kids were around and, and when you get to know people like that and spend that kind of time together you get really close and uh you know i love them i think you really love them they've managed to raise four really really good kids which is very hard to do in this industry as a mother who's raising two kids now my hat is off to them and i remember one thing they said to us is we're a family and we're always going to travel together and that's something that really stuck with tom and i they're the perfect role models for them but ron was disappointed when far and away failed to find an audience to make matters worse he and his partner brian grazer were having serious reservations about staying with their publicly held company and soon the filmmakers announced that they would leave the corporation Furious shareholders felt their investments were under siege and filed a class action lawsuit charging Howard and Grazer with fraud and coercion. But after a frustrating year-long battle, the stockholders were forced to admit that without Howard and Grazer, the company had little or no value, and they begrudgingly sold their shares to the creative partners. At the age of 39, Ron Howard was finally at the helm of his own independent film company, and for the first time in his career, 
He held all the decision-making power. You are watching Ron... ...book about his true life experience on the voyage of Apollo 13, a near catastrophic space mission that in 1970 threw the world into a state of panic. Although the outcome was already a well-known fact, Ron couldn't wait to put the story on film and hired an all-star cast that included Kevin Bacon, Bill Paxton, Gary Sinise, and Tom Hanks. There were so many things that were going to be hard to communicate to the audience, but there were philosophical leaps of faith that Ron made that I thought were very, very impressive. Ron sent the actors to NASA's space camp in Texas, where they trained with experienced astronauts. After much lobbying, he even secured access to the KC-135 jet, better known as the Vomit Comet, an aircraft that simulates weightlessness at zero gravity. And Bill Paxton had his home movie camera to document it all. Gary, hey buddy, you're in space, man. I'm in space. You're in space. As you get a little better at it, just start practicing moving around and just think in terms of trying to get from one specific place to the other. Pushing off the flying floor. There you go. There you go. Hello, Houston. <laughs> when everyone got off the plane, and I saw all their little beaming faces, and I looked at Ron, and, and I said, so, what do you think? And he said, what's the problem? We could shoot up there. When the chance to shoot on the zero-gravity aircraft came along, Ron jumped on that thing so fast and so aggressively in order to make it happen that it was almost like guerrilla filmmaking, you know? It was like guys with handheld cameras. We jammed it all in there, and we did it. And while we were doing it, we are thinking, can you believe we're getting to make a movie like this? 